right, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, as I said just a few moments ago, uh, this is Erin Carroll. I'm here from the Early Childhood team, and I am also joined by Michelle. Um, we will be going through uh, this webinar over the course of the next hour. It shouldn't take an hour. Um, I do want to alert everybody to the, the chat box where you should feel free to enter any questions that you have at any point throughout the presentation. Um, and we will answer those. I also want to let everybody know that this recording, uh, I'm sorry, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we will be sure to share that with you as well as a copy of these slides um, through our key child care support contacts and then they can pass that on to everybody. Um, our hope and expectation is that every member of our child care support agencies um, listens to uh, this webinar. So those that are not able to make it right at this time should listen to it um, at another time. With that, we will go ahead and get started. So welcome to our January 2018 webinar, um, Earning the Early Childhood Ancillary Certificate, Updates for Child Care Support Staff. So the purpose of this webinar will be to review critical information related to the Early Childhood Ancillary Certificate requirements and learn about key resources um, and timelines for the remainder of the 2019 year, really getting us to that key July 2019 date. So the first portion of this webinar will focus on the EC Ancillary Certificate requirement, answering a few essential questions. Then we'll go into some slides that we've put together specifically for child care support staff. So that will be section two of this presentation. Those slides are answering the questions that we commonly receive from our child care resource referral coaches, directors, as well as mental health consultants, basically all of our folks that are out there working with teachers every day. So we wanted to answer some of those specific questions for you. Third and fourth, we'll talk about key communication and information, so talking about resources and essential next steps as we are gearing up for the July 2019 requirements. I want to just start by imparting the real and true importance of this requirement and all that we are about to face between now and July of 2019. I know for those of us who have been um, working in this field for a while, it feels like the Early Childhood Ancillary Certificate may be old news, but we know that that is not how people um, working in centers feel. Uh, many folks may have heard about this when we first started talking about it in 2014, but now that it says 2019 on their calendar, they're really starting to pay attention. Um, I know at the Department of Education, the number of questions that we have received about specific incidences, unique cases, and then very common recurring questions has dramatically picked up um, just since the beginning of the new year. And I know that it will probably continue uh, to increase as we get closer and closer to July 2019. I also will say that without a doubt, the Early Childhood Ancillary Certificate is one of our more complicated processes and procedures. There are some um, details that are, can be a little bit difficult to communicate. And so we really rely on all of you as our key partners who are out there really working and supporting our child care directors and teachers um, to deliver the information when it is something that you're confident in and refer to the correct source uh, when it's a little too complicated or too specific. So with that and with my um, early thanks to all of the support that you are providing on this initiative, uh, we will go ahead and get started. One thing I want to note here, and this may be standing out to some of you that have been um, looking at us talking about the Early Childhood Ancillary Certificate for a while, um, we have introduced a new abbreviation here, uh, the ECAC or ECAC. Um, for the Early Childhood Ancillary Certificate. Um, it was suggested to us that we find a way to shorten this term, and so we have tried to start introducing that in some of our new resources that will be um, rolling out. So if you see that and you are wondering uh, why that looks 
so new and different. Um, that's an intentional purpose for us to try and simplify some of the uh, promotional and information resources that we're putting out there. So with that, let's dig into the ECAC requirement. So there are three key features that we really want to highlight here. The first is the um, a central uh, requirement related to the ECAC. So this is, of course, that beginning on July 1, 2019, directors will be responsible for verifying that lead teachers in type three early learning centers have the ECAC, ECAC as a minimum credential within 24 months of their start date as lead teacher. This will be assured in the program partner assurances that are completed this spring. There are also additional changes around training for the ECAC. So as of July 2018, I'm sorry, there were changes in the requirements for where candidates complete their training at an ECAC. By and large, teachers that are earning a CDA or technical diploma should be attending a BSEE approved ECAC preparation program. And then the third feature that we always want to keep top of mind and remind our um, directors and teachers about is the supports that are available for the ECAC. So teachers can receive scholarships to attend approved ECAC training programs as well as to complete their um, college degrees that qualify for the ECAC. Additionally, teachers who earn the ECAC can qualify for increased tax credits. Uh, possibly qualifying for the highest annual refund amount within two years. So what is the ECAC? Most simply put, the ECAC is a professional credential for teachers that are working in early learning centers. It's issued by the LDOE at no cost when a teacher demonstrates one of the qualifying credentials and it allows teachers to qualify for increased refundable tax credits. As of July 2019, owners and directors in type three early learning centers will be required to meet the ECAC requirement in order to maintain their status as a type three license. So who needs the ECAC? So as I said, it is uh, as of July 2019, lead teachers in type three early learning centers will be required to have an ECAC as a minimum credential within 24 months of their start date as a lead teacher. So this really and truly means that if somebody began working as a lead teacher before July 1, 2017, or 24 months uh, before July 1, 2019, that individual must have the ECAC as of July of this year. For teachers who began working as a lead teacher after July 1 of 2017, meaning they will have been a lead teacher for less than 24 months as of July of this year, they must be in the process of earning an ECAC and will need to have it within 24 months of the date they began as a lead teacher at that uh, child care center. So there are a few key steps here for teachers when they are entering a type three early learning center. First, a teacher gets hired as a lead teacher so that may be getting hired as a lead teacher or promoted into a lead teacher position. They have 24 months from that date to earn the ECAC. In that 24 months, they are working to qualify for the ECAC, so completing a credential and accessing scholarships. Once that credential is completed, they will apply for the ECAC from the Department of Education. And we'll talk about that process in just a second. We also want to note that the ECAC can be used as a qualifying credential for directors as of this year. It is not the only way for directors to qualify. 
as a director according to licensing regulations, but it is one way. Um, in this case, the director must have their ECAC prior to uh, meeting that licensing requirement. And that is for the case for all types of licenses. However, for this presentation, um, we are primarily focused on the ECAC requirement for lead teachers and early learning centers, um, as this is the change we're really preparing for. Okay, so now, how do you qualify for the ECAC? So teachers and directors can qualify for the ECAC by demonstrating the completion of one of four credentials. So simply put, this is a CDA and a high school diploma or equivalent, or a technical diploma in early childhood. For those first two ways, training should be completed at a BSEE approved ECAC program. You can also qualify with an associate degree in early childhood and a bachelor's degree or higher. Those degrees must be completed at a regionally accredited college or university. Now we're gonna talk in details about um, each one of these qualifying credentials. So method one is qualifying for the ECAC using a CDA and high school diploma or equivalent. For the most part, individuals should attend a BSEE-approved ECAC program in order to use a CDA. ECAC programs are high-quality teacher preparation programs designed for child care teachers. There are 22 around the state, with new programs still being approved and the current programs expanding to parishes as we speak. Teachers that are working at Type 3 centers may be able to use Louisiana Pathway Scholarships to attend an ECAC program. If they do so, these scholarships may be able to cover the entire cost of tuition. Um, this is a huge plus for our child care teachers. We believe strongly in the value of these high quality preparation programs and have made a significant financial investment to make sure this is affordable and accessible. Now let's go through that additional information that makes this just a little bit more complicated than those first few bullets. So while most individuals should be attending a BSEE approved ECAC program, teachers who had completed 36 hours or more of CDA training as of July 1, 2018 are not required to attend an ECAC program. We know that these individuals had already made a significant commitment to their CDA training, and they are permitted to complete that CDA with any trainer or program, regardless of approval status. So that is individuals who had completed 36 hours or more as of July 1, 2018. Teachers who cannot access an approved ECAC program may apply for an approved program waiver, which will allow them to complete CDA training at any location. We'll talk about this waiver a little bit more in a few minutes, but an important thing to note is that the waiver should be earned prior to completing CDA training and prior to applying for the ECAC. Additionally, the Louisiana Pathways CDA Assessment Scholarship is available to help complete the CDA credential. The second method is qualifying with a technical diploma in early childhood. So again, in general, um, an individual who wanted to use a technical diploma in early childhood to earn their ECAC would need to attend a BSE approved ECAC program. Uh, currently, we have one technical diploma program, Unitech, that has been approved to offer a technical diploma in early childhood and is an approved ECAC program. Um, they offer the location in several regions around the state, so that's definitely an option to consider. And similar to the CDA prep, um, Louisiana Pathway Scholarships can be used for this. So 
So there are a few clarifications for this um, as well. So any teacher who had begun their technical diploma training prior to July 1, 2018 uh, may go ahead and complete the program they started, even if it's not an approved ECAC program. Again, similar to the CDA, teachers who cannot access the ECAC program may apply for an approved program waiver. And we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Method three and method four are qualifying using an AA or a BA or above. So the third and fourth option are to earn a degree from a regionally accredited college or university. So if this is done with an associate degree, the associate degree must be completed in an early childhood related field. For a bachelor's degree or higher, that can be in any subject area. And then an important thing to note here is that we still have the Louisiana Pathways College Tuition Scholarships that have always existed. Teachers can still access these and use them um, to support the cost of tuition if they are completing a college degree related to early childhood. So those have been longstanding and they're still in place. The final slide in this section, so um, important to keep in mind the requirements around renewing the ECAC. So teachers and directors who have earned the ECAC should renew it every three years through a free online application process. Um, the ECAC should be renewed at the request of the individual's employer. And the application must include demonstration of 45 clock hours, in early childhood care and education and 80 hours of work experience with young children or families. If the individual earned their ECAC through a CDA and they have elected to keep their CDA active with the Council for Professional Recognition, they may submit their renewed CDA to meet those requirements instead of demonstrating proof of the training um, and work experience uh, as you would otherwise. Um, okay, and I did get one question here uh, regarding the teachers that have 36 hours of CDA training. So the question was, for teachers that have 36 hours of CDA training completed, do clock hours, like training clock hours that might be completed with a resource and referral center count? The answer to that is yes. Any training that could be used towards a CDA, traditionally had been used towards a CDA, if they had 36 hours or more of that, that they were collecting and using towards a CDA, as of July 1, 2018, they can go ahead and continue to complete that, um, that CDA training at a non-approved trainer or program. So now let's talk a little bit more about where do you apply for the ECAC. So once you have the qualifying credential in your hands and you are ready to roll, teachers and directors apply for the ECAC through the Teach LA Live portal. This is new as of April, um, and so we want to really talk through exactly how this works because we get a lot of questions around um, around this requirement. So every person who is ready to apply for their ECAC should create an account with Teach LA Live. Um, this is the online certification system for all of Louisiana Department of Education. You will see when you go there that this is for our K-12 teachers, administrators, guidance counselors, anybody who is certified by the Louisiana Department of Education, now including our child care teachers, goes through Teach LA Live. This is where initial applications and renewal applications are submitted. Um, online. 
The huge benefit to the Teach LA Live portal is that if you are submitting documents in there, if you are submitting questions in there, you can really track the progress and make sure that you can see what was submitted, you can see what the certification specialist sees, um, and so it really is a benefit, though it does require you know, the creation of an account. So when an applicant submits their initial application, they need to complete the application form, but they also need to include the required evidence. So for CDA applications, this would include three things. This would include the CDA certificate from the Council for Professional Recognition. This would include the high school diploma or equivalent, and assuming you had gone to an ECAC program, your transcript documenting that you had attended a BSE approved program. For individuals applying with a technical diploma, AA and BA, um, those individuals need to include a transcript that shows that their degree was conferred and completed. So the Teach LA Live can be accessed at ldoe.force.com. We have recently posted detailed directions with step-by-step -step pictures that are specific to ECAC applicants for the Teach Live portal. You can get to those through that link, and we, it will also be embedded in the slides that we send around after this presentation. So I did get a follow-up question about um, the 36-hour requirement. So I'll go back to that very quickly. And the question was, what about people who want to obtain a CDA but do not work at a child care center um, because they won't be able to qualify for the approved program and they do not have the 36 hours? So a few things about that question. The first thing to keep in mind is that while scholarships for the approved programs are limited to teachers in type three programs, attendance is not. Approved programs can and do enroll individuals that are not teachers at type three programs. They just charge them tuition. So that's an important thing to keep in mind and that will continue to be true as we expand programs across the state. Um, truthfully, if you are earning the ECAC, you probably do want to wait until you're already working as a teacher in the child care center so that you can obtain that scholarship funding. And that's what I would encourage somebody who asked you that question to do. Um, but for instance, if somebody had exceptional circumstances, they can attend an approved program. Um, they just will not qualify for Louisiana Pathways Scholarship. I also got a question about waiving the required submission for the high school diploma or equivalent. So in extreme circumstances where individuals cannot locate their high school diploma or equivalent um, because it was lost in a flood or some other instance. We do have a process for um, waiving the submission of that. It is rare. Um, if you are finding a circumstance where that is true, please reach out to Michelle, um, and Michelle will be sending the follow-up email. Um, and she can provide that documentation to you so you know how to do that. Again, we really don't encounter that very often. In almost all cases, individuals are able to get a copy of their high school diploma. <laughs> it is true that there are a few individuals who earned the CDA and never had a high school diploma. Um, these individuals earned their CDA quite some time ago. We have also, in those cases, with documentation from their employer, been able to use that same process to waive the requirement. But again, it is rare, um, and we would be considered on a case-by-case. -case. So you would want to reach out to Michelle um, if you encounter that situation. It's a great question. Okay. 
So now we're going to go into a set of questions that um, are really specific for child care support staff. Um, these are some of the questions that we get most commonly from folks working at CCRNRs or mental health consultants or other folks that we know are out there working in the child care field every day. So these will be um, what will happen if a center does not meet the July 2019 requirement. I know we're all starting to get that question more and more. People are testing the waters. Um, how do I submit the initial or renewal application online? And where do I go for help? Where do I get a copy of my certificate? Why haven't I received my certificate yet? What were the training changes that happened in July 2018? And how does the approved program waiver process work? I want to stop here and say an important note is none of this should be entirely new information. It is all in our long um, early childhood ancillary certificate FAQ document, which is linked here. I know you've all seen it. Um, so if you have questions, refer back to that. Of course, you can also follow up with us, though. So common questions. Um, what happens if an early learning center does not meet the July 2019 requirement? So all type three early learning center directors have already been notified of this, but in April of 2019, per usual, type three early, early learning centers will sign their annual program partner assurances, which is what gives them their type three academic approval for the 2019-2020 year. This year, they will assure that they will meet the EC ancillary certificate requirement as of July of 2019. Any center who is found to be in violation of this assurance at any time from the 2019 to 2020 year will be required to complete a corrective action plan. So we already have a process for issuing corrective action plans for anybody who is not meeting their academic approval assurances. This process will just be expanded to include those individuals who are not meeting their ECAC requirement. For people who have not encountered a corrective action plan from academic approval, it details a specific timeline and set of steps to remedy the violation of their academic approval. If these conditions are not met once a corrective action plan is issued, the center will be at risk of losing their status as a type three center. It's written in the policy that if those steps are not met and there's no remedy made, that that type three license um, can be revoked. Again, we want to avoid this at all costs and we will um, continue to provide as much information and support as we can to remedy the situation for the folks that are found to not meet this requirement. Um, so how do we submit uh, the initial or renewal application online? So as we said before, all initial and renewal ECAC applications must be submitted online through the Teach LA Live portal. Each applicant should create their own account um, to submit these materials. Specific directions for ECAC applicants have been posted online. I would encourage everybody to review those themselves. Um, for me personally, as somebody who does not have my own ECAC, uh, it was through reviewing those, interact those instructions that I, picture by picture, really understood exactly what needs to happen when you submit the application, and I have been much more prepared to answer the many questions I get since looking at those closely. Um, so for those of you who have not explored the Teach LA Live portal yourselves, I would strongly encourage looking at that. So the items that are submitted through Teach Live portal, this is your initial ECAC applications, including evidence, renewal applications, and questions about applications. So these can be submitted through two ways. You can submit the um, questions about the application through the portal 
in your account. You can also send questions related to the ECAC application process to certification at la.gov. And if you do this, please remember to include EC ancillary certificate in the subject line. So we'll talk a little bit later about what kinds of questions would go to certification versus Michelle or I, um, but when you are submitting questions or when a teacher is submitting questions specific to an individual's certification status, problem submitting certifications, problems with using the Teach LA Live portal, um, it is the certification team at the LDOE that resolves these. Um, the reason for including EC Ancillary Certificate in the subject line, uh, we have a you know, priority status to make sure that we're answering those as we're working towards the July 2019 um, line. We want to make sure that the folks that we have um, hired to work specifically on the Ancillary Certificate uh, in the certification team are getting flagged to those questions soon. So if you um, are able to encourage people to use that subject line smartly, uh, they will likely get answered a little bit faster. Okay, another question. Uh, where do I get a copy of an approved certificate? How can I verify someone's certification status? So um, as it has been since we started this process, uh, certificates can still be found at www.teachlouisiana.net. So to find an approved certificate, you would go to that website, click twice on verify a certificate or teaching authorization, enter the first and last name of an applicant, uh, being mindful of any name changes, hyphenated last names, maiden names, you may need to try it a few times um, to see how it pops up in the system. Click the link next to the individual's name, and then this will provide information. Um, about any current or expired certificates, including the active ECAC certificate, um, if it is there, and the certificate can be printed from that screen if desired. Similarly, for checking the status of a certificate, so let's say you're just wondering where this, where an application is, you would go to that same website. There's a link right below. Um, verifying a certificate that says status of a certification application. You would enter the first and last name, click see more, and this will really give you a log of actions taken. So it will show you um, if the case has been started, if it has been closed, if a letter or notification was shared with the applicant requesting additional documentation or um, notifying them of something. It can all be done um, at that teachlouisiana.net website. Okay, so another common question and certainly something that can be a little confusing um, is what were the training requirements that went into place on July of 2018? So July of 2018 was when we really made our transition to uh, the requirement to attend a state-approved ECAC program. So there were three key changes that happened on July of 2018. For folks that are pursuing an ECAC through the CDA, as of July 2019, individuals who had completed 36 hours or less must enroll in a state-approved ECAC program. So if they had 36 hours or less, as of July 1, state ECAC program. Individuals who had 36 hours or more uh, may complete their hours at any program. As I said earlier, for the technical diploma, if they had begun their training prior to July 1, 2018 at an unapproved program, they can go ahead and finish that degree. However, if they had not, they must attend a state-approved ECAC program. An important note here um, is about career diplomas. So um, in the past, we've seen a lot of career diplomas. We have already seen these really phase out over the years. We rarely receive them anymore. 
Um, it is important to note that career diplomas are no longer eligible for the ECAC unless they were earned or started prior to July 1, 2018. So probably the most common one here is Penn Foster. If somebody had begun their Penn Foster training prior to July 1, 2018, they can use that for the ECAC, but they should not begin a Penn Foster program now. It will not qualify them for the ECAC. Okay, so we have a few slides here to talk about the approved program waiver. Um, I know that there is a lot of confusion about what the approved program waiver process is out there in the field. If an individual cannot access an approved ECAC program, they may be considered for an approved program wa waiver. This next part is very important. The approved program waiver does not excuse them from the ECAC requirement. There is no waiver process to excuse an individual from meeting the ECAC requirement that will go into effect July 1, 2019. The ECAC waiver, I'm sorry, the approved program waiver only allows them to attend um, unapproved training. So individuals who receive the approved program waiver are allowed to complete their training with any trainer. They must still have an ECAC as a minimum credential within 24 months of their start date as a lead teacher. So that is very important. We have heard um, many questions come in where that's clear that that's a little bit confusing. So if you hear any miscommunication about that, please do your best to clarify um, what the approved program waiver is for. So a few more details here. The approved program waiver um, is available for three circumstances. So individuals who cannot attend a BSE approved ECAC program um, due to three separate circumstances can apply for an approved program waiver. They should apply for this program waiver before they complete their training. The three circumstances in which an individual will be considered for an approved program waiver are for individuals who live in unserved parishes. So there's a list on the approved program waiver um, that lists where no program was available as of July 1, 2018. If an individual lives in one of those parishes, they will qualify um, for an approved program waiver. The second way is for um, individuals who find themselves uh, in a parish where there's limited capacity in the available approved program. So some individuals may seek to attend their approved ECAC program and find that that program is full. If that is the case, they can demonstrate the evidence that that program was full and receive an approved program waiver. The third category um, is for additional geographic concerns um, and exceptional circumstances. So for this category, individuals are expected to explain uh, the circumstances that they fall under and the ECAC, I'm sorry, and the approved program waiver is uh, considered by a committee. So the three categories are approved program waiver for an unserved parish, approved program waiver for limited capacity in parish program, and then other geographic availability concerns. Approved program waivers are reviewed quarterly. Um, the time schedule is very clearly outlined on the application page. Um, and again, applicants should apply for this ECAT, for this waiver um, before they begin their training. And if you have any questions about that, about um, different circumstances, you should reach out to uh, Michelle.
Okay, so we really have just a few more slides here. So if you do have more questions, please start typing them in. Um, but we wanna talk about some key communication and information for preparing for the July 2019 ECAC requirements. So this is a list of our resources, and I did get a question, will we be sending these slides so that you can click on all of these and um, keep them accessible to you? The answer is yes, we will be sending them around soon. Um, but I will talk through exactly what they are so you know how to look for them. So for general information, um, we have the ECAC FAQs. This is the same document we've had for years that so we did restructure it recently to hopefully make it a little bit easier to use. Um, this is your best and most thorough source of information related to the ECAC. We will soon have a new um, flyer, a one-page pretty resource that um, we will share some printed out copies but also make available for folks going into the field to print themselves. This would be a great thing to try to get into the hands of child care centers when you go to visit. It provides a reminder and a short summary of next steps for directors and teachers. And then in October 2018, we sent out a director letter to every uh, type three director. And I put in here, received in October 2019. They received it in October 2018. Um, this reminded them of this um, impending requirement. We will likely be sending another letter um, with additional directions in the next several months, really trying to get everybody ready for what they will see in their program partner assurances in April. Resources for applying for the ECAC, um, so the Teach Live portal, the Teach Live ECAC directions, and then teachlouisiana.net. And then resources for attending an approved ECAC program. So we always keep our list of approved ECAC programs up to date. That is your number one source for finding where you can get approved program training. And then the approved program waiver. Um, so that's what we were discussing earlier. Um, if an individual qualifies and needs to complete training in a non-approved program, um, that's where they would find that. We will also be um, continuing to up our key communication regarding the ECAC. So throughout 2019, we will be providing information and resources. Um, we will be starting a series of routine webinars starting with this time next Thursday. that are for the field generally. Um, these will be monthly webinars where we will review many of the slides we reviewed today, formatted you know, a little bit differently, and then um, the recording of that will, of course, be shared in the early childhood newsletter. We will do our best to take and either answer at the time or follow up and respond um, to questions that are submitted during those webinars from individuals. Um, the early childhood newsletter and website, so we have and will continue to keep information related to the ECAC in every newsletter that we send out. Um, hoping to catch the, the individual who opens it just every once in a while. Um, any new guidance documents or questions will continue to post on our website. All of these resources are on the Preparing and Certifying Teachers page, which you can link to from the main Early Childhood page um, on the website. Um, but you can also you know, keep track of the links if that's um, more helpful. And then answers to individual questions. So um, if you all are submitting questions, you should go ahead and feel free to reach out to Michelle. Um, you can always though send questions to earlychildhood at la.gov if you're unsure of where it should go. Um, then it'll either get rooted to Michelle or to whoever is most appropriate to answer it. Do please try to remember though, if you are encountering certif certificate, uh, specific questions that those can go to certification at la.gov. Um, so those are our two key public email addresses. The certification questions are things related to a specific person who's wondering where their uh, status is or is having trouble with their um, Teach Live account. Um, anything really specific to submitting and receiving their certificate.
So next steps for child care support organizations. Um, we know and appreciate that you are um, really our public face and key sources of information for the child care field, um, and which is why we want to be sure to arm you with all the resources and answers that we can. Um, so steps to consider as you are, you know, I'm sure starting to receive more and more questions about the ECAC. Uh, you may want to consider keeping a copy of the ECAC FAQs on hand when you're out visiting centers, um, if that's helpful to you for answering questions. Um, any new resources that come out from the department, so I mentioned the flyer, um, other things that we are able to get together. Um, you know, we will make sure to alert those alert you of those, um, and you would maybe want to share those as you're going out and visiting with folks. Um, ask directors that you interact with about their progress in meeting the July 2019 requirement. Um, as you're visiting, talking to folks you know, maybe just check in, see where they are, see if there's anything that um, could be easily resolved. And then any complex questions unique circumstances, points of confusion, please do reach out to earlychildhood at la.gov or to Michelle. Um, the biggest thing we want to avoid is misinformation as much as possible. So if we're not sure, um, send it to us. And if we're not sure, we'll research it and get back to you. Um, you know, as we implement a requirement as big and as important as this one, there are bound to be um, new questions and circumstances that pop up, so please never hesitate to send that on to us. Finally, Michelle and I both just want to thank you all um, for your really essential work as we work towards meeting this really um, critical goal for early learning centers. I know it feels like a big lift, and it is. Um, there's no denying that, um, but it is so important, and we, we really value your help in getting there. So it is 12.50. Um, I don't see any new questions that have come in yet, but I will stay on the line for a few minutes if anybody types them in. Um, and if you don't have any questions, uh, thank you for joining, and we will send these resources and this recording to you shortly.